Okay, guys, um, we try to make it quite interactive, so um, we hope that you are awakened and uh, uh, you're willing to take part to take part this, uh, for this workshop. I'm Edward, and I'm in charge of alliances at cleverconnect.com, which is um, a fast-growing company, European company um, in HR technology, and we basically help clients build the best processes, best recruiting processes, um, given the challenges and uh, different recruitment needs. And I'm with uh, Stefan. Hi, everyone, and uh, thank you very much all for being here. Um, so I'm Stefan. I'm the head of international sales. I just joined the company about six months ago. Um, I'm French, but actually I'm almost more German than French now, um, <laughs> after working on 12 years of my life in, in Germany. Um, so what we're here today to, to speak about, can, can you go on the next one? Yeah, cool. So that's what you saw on, on the agenda, probably. And, um, you might not be entirely sure of what it is about, um, which is um, understandable. Um, that's why I'd like just to, to, to bring to you um, some elements so that you understand what will be the purpose of this workshop. So um, very often we talk about employer branding, and that's now becoming a bit of a common thing, right? So um, even though a lot of companies are still working on it, um, it's still um, a, a topic that has been discussed like, for the last two years quite a lot. Um, but one thing we feel like one thing has not been discussed properly, actually. So the, we, we tend to define open branding in two different sections. Um, one is the actual awareness of your brand that you will have on the web, digitally speaking, on Glassdoor, for example, or Konunu in Germany, or other stuff you might use for that. The way you display it online, you know, so the perception you will create among the candidate. And the other part is um, the actual experience that the candidate will make with your brand. So, once they got, bless you. Thank you. Once they got a perception of your brand, um, then the, the next question is, how can you ensure that the experience we make of your brand is actually matching um, the, the, the perception you wanted to give them, right? So I'll give you a brief example. Uh, imagine you're on the queue in Düsseldorf or in Anvers or in London or in Paris and the Champs Elysees, right? And you're looking at a beautiful shop, like let's take Cathy, for example, right? It looks amazing, you, you just in front of that shop and you think, oh my God, I never went into such a shop. It looks, it looks amazing, just, just even for the experience, I'd like to go inside to see what it is, right? If you don't have money to, to afford jewelry. So you have a high perception in front of that shop, you go in, and I imagine when you go in that the person supposed to welcome you, but is hello, is a bit rude, um, is not really willing to listen to you, right? So. Um, they say, okay, the gold is here, the white gold is there, the platinum is there, you know, just help yourself, go, you know. What would you feel? Like, how would you feel? Like, you, you imagine you, it's Cartier, like, you, you expect a lot, and you go in and you get such a service. How would you feel? Frustrated? Horrible? Horrible. Horrible. <laughs> Angry? Yeah? Like Julia Roberts and Pretty Rogan. <laughs> uh, yeah, for example. So, so. A great image. So, you, you feel. <laughs> Oh, disappointed, uh, yeah. right? What, what do you say? Breakfast at Tiffany's. Breakfast at Tiffany's? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so probably that's what you do, right? You, you, you go straight out of Cartier and you go to Tiffany, right? Yeah. <laughs> right? That's what, you, that's what I would do, probably. Right? So you um, go to the competition. So, so, so you drop, right? You basically drop the sales process at the end of the day, right? So now, taking that analogy, right? And imagine now you are a candidate. You're doing the same thing. So. You're going to Glassdoor, that, that's what a lot of candidates are doing, right? They go into Glassdoor, they look at the mark, oh, 4.5, great, a lot of stars, a lot of nice comments, salary is high, a lot of goodies, uh, free, free breakfast, free stuff, and so on. So office look, look very modern, a lot of vacation, stuff like that, right? You think like, oh my God, that this company is awesome. I really want to go there. So you start an interview process, and then at the first interview, you're invited, and then the guy comes late. The hiring manager, like five, ten minutes late, okay, maybe it can happen, you know. But then you go into the interview and the guy is very rude, not polite, not really keen to get to know you, and then start maybe to ask questions which are a bit strange, you know, like you feel like, what, why would that be meaningful, you know, for the interview? How would you feel? Like, probably similar, right, to what you feel in front of the Cartier shop. So, what do you do? You drop, you go out, you go to the next one, right? So that's what we'd like to talk about uh, in, this, in this workshop now. Um, how can you ensure that actually 
the experience of your brand is matching the perception you're giving. Right? You can be middle in perception, then be middle in experience, that's good, or better, but not lower. Right? So what you're saying is that we need, to do, we need to build the best experience to match the expectation of candidates. But before that, we need to define what is the best candidate and what makes an employee better than another. And we'd like you to know, well, to tell us, what, uh, well, according to you, what makes an employee better than another in your organization. If someone, if some of you can say some, uh, some of the best indicators you have in your organization would be helpful. What do you think? I don't know, like curiosity, I don't know, um, management, adaptability. What is a key indicator to success for a candidate, an employee in your organization? Management, okay, ability to manage, okay, to manage people. So what, leadership? What would you say? Curiosity. Curiosity to change, okay, uh, curiosity in general. Okay, okay. another one? Sorry? Transparency. Transparency. Authenticity. Okay, right. Team leadership. Team leadership. Okay, that's nice. Is there anyone in the, in the back? Innovative. Innovative. Okay. Okay, well, what, did you, what you just said were only soft skills, personality skills. Okay? Ability to work with people, ability to um, learn, curiosity, um, ability to think collective, team leadership. Ability to move forward and to go to innovation, innovative. All of these skills are very important to be very different in an organization, to make the difference and to be better than another. Than another. All right? This is important because most of the recruitment processes only are only based on high skills at first. I was just looking at uh, some of the looks here. Yes, I mean, the hard skills are important too, right? This is not what we're saying. So soft skills are important. Mm. But the question is then what makes the difference between an employee to another doing the same type of job, right? So basically at equal hard skills, that, that's the question. So um, what you described was the soft skills. So um, I'd like to give you some key facts to get some thinking going, right? Um, the first question I'll have here uh, for you in the room is, actually, do you know when was the first CV created and who did it? Just a guess. Any guess? Which century? <laughs> Any guess? Give you some, some clue. <laughs> Roman? Well, it okay. was not a CV at this stage, but yeah. Any guess? No. All right, that's 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 okay. I'll, I'll give you the answer. So that's in 1482, right? That's Leonardo da Vinci, who did that. Um, he was the first guy actually creating a CV to the purpose of business, right? So describing his skills for business purposes. Um, if you think at it, I mean, when I went into that um, and, and look it up on the internet, I thought like, oh my God, it's, it's, it's just crazy to think that we are using a technology or, or a medium which is more than 550 years old. And this is still the core of the recruitment process today. Um, it's great, and we need it. Again, I'm not saying this is bad. I mean, that's, da, da Vinci is a genius, right? So what he did is, is, was incredible for the whole history of everything he did. But it's just crazy to think that in the recruitment industry, we're still basing most of it on a CV at the start of the process. Um, when you look at other industries, they completely moved on. Like, the technologies they use has nothing to do with, like, 10 years before. Like, Think about the cloud, like data center is almost outdated, right? We don't talk about data center now, we talk only about cloud. So um, that's the first fact I'd like to give you. The, the, the second one, that's some figures. Um, that's actually um, interesting to look. So if you have in the back of your mind that the CV is a main medium, right, which is 550 years old, mm -hmm. the first figure I'll give you is 81% of the recruiter actually reject um, a candidate on the base of a lack of soft skills. Right, so bad communication, bad attitude, um, lack of motivation, lack of career plan or goals, you know. Um, the second metric I'll give you is the communication skills, 90% of it actually, is non-verbal. So that means you can't, I mean, there's no other way than just seeing it. Um, even if you record a voice, that's only 10%. 
of what you will perceive as being good communication skills. And the last figure I'll give you is 82% of the web traffic is actually video-based. And then you might think, like, what the link, right? <laughs> well, why am I giving you 82% of web traffic is video-based? Well, in our daily life, we are all used to watch video, right? You want to cook, you look a video on, the, on, on YouTube, right? Um, to, make, to make a nice cake. You want to you wanna fix something? That, that's probably what you're going to do as well. I was myself trying to, to mount the, the bed of my little girl. I was not able to do. I look it up on YouTube. How to do it, right? So taking that into consideration, we are all used to use video in every single thing of our life, what we're doing. But looking at the recruitment, 81% of the um, candidates are being rejected in soft skills without using any video, using a medium which is 550 years old. Um, it's just, it, it was, for me, it was a bit mind-blowing, right? I'm, I'm just in the company for six months, so everything for me is, is a bit new as well. I was in Indeed before. And um, um, when I look at 90% is of the communication non variable that means we have nothing actually today in the recruitment process to actually see those communication skills that we just previously before said it was important to recruit. So taking that into consideration, now the, you can go to the next slide. Um, two very well-known guys, I mean, maybe just one for you. The second one is well-known for us. Um, but they have a lot of similarities. So the first one, no need to present Steve Jobs, right? The second one, this is Thomas. Thomas is our best sales guy. He's a top performer of our company. But they have a lot in common, those two guys. Um, Steve Jobs and Thomas, they drop out of school. They didn't go so far. They started jobs, and after a couple of months, stopped. Before to be famous, right, for Steve Jobs. Um, and Thomas was exactly the same. Actually, Louis, our founder, just here, and you know, had, was the one to take the decision to hire him. But when we got his CVs, we were like, no way we're going to invite this guy. Like, it doesn't make sense, you know? He dropped two times school, he dropped two, twice, he left his two jobs before, and so on, there's no way. But we were a small company at the time, we thought like, okay, we don't have the luxury to do anything, you know, to, to drop those people, so let's, let's just send him an invitation to perform a video interview online. He did it, we watched the video, and said, oh my god, he has a lot of potential. So we say, okay, a lot of things are weird, but he has a lot of potential, so let's invite him. And we finally hire him, and that's the best one now for the last four years. So. Um, when, when you look at that, and then you look at the unemployment rate you have in Belgium, in Germany, in Holland, all around like between 3 and 5%. Do we have the luxury to do that, to drop those guys? Can we actually afford to do that? So that's the question for you to answer, right? Not for me. Um, but that's the reason why we decided to build a tool to enable you to do that. So what you're saying is that, well, in a high competitive market, you, don't, you can't um, allow you to miss the good talent, and based on the CV, only on the CV, you might miss great people and great talent. So putting the skills, well, the soft skills very in front of the process of recruiting process is a way to guarantee you that you don't miss the great talent based on the soft skills that make people, well, collaborators better than another. So it's very important to get more information about the soft skills about people before saying say yes or no, because as you said, 81% of people are rejecting the process because of lack of soft skills. So maybe this is the first part you, mean you need to, um, to have a look at. It. Then we, well, this is very uh, conceptual. We want to, you to, to, um, to know more about what we do. And we only have a use case because we don't have so much time. So we want to present something that maybe is more illustrative and maybe more concrete is what we can do for a company that here it's a, um, a building, uh, um, a Baldi Corporation, well, we just made up. And um, for instance, this is a process of uh, video interviewing in front of the recruiting process. This is an example we can, uh, we can watch, you can discover here. So here, for instance, you are in, um, on, a, on a car website, we can build it for you. Uh, you have a building, uh, this is a building corporation, so you have engineer jobs, construction jobs, human resources, every support jobs. Here the candidate can um, click on the engineer part and uh, know more about uh, the job position. This is the awareness part we talked about just before. This is the, 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 the part of the process or, uh, uh, when the candidate 
is looking for information about the company and about the job position, the open job position, okay? This is something you already know. Everybody now has the websites. But what we can do is let people apply on video. And this is quite different. Because the, video, the candidate here don't apply, doesn't apply with a CV, or he can, but applies directly on video. What he does next? He comes to their experience then, okay? This is what comes next awareness. So that's what we call experience, okay? The candidate comes to experience and can, of course, know more about the, the company and, uh, and uh, the job position criteria, but more of it, he can answer very specific questions for the job position that let you more, know more about the candidate and the motivation. Then you can also make him meet a few people, maybe his future manager, and to the next questions, have a video of the next manager saying to him, okay, now, we want to know more about you, about yourself, about your personality, your motivation, who you are, because that matters, okay? And then I ask you to ask very different, very, very small questions, like uh, what's your availability? It's a very simple question, just to know more about uh, concrete, um, your concrete applications, okay? This comes directly into a smart recruiter then, and uh, lets the recruiters have the best experience while he's hiring, because he can know all the information he needs, to figure out who is the best tenant for the job position. So here he can know, he can know about the CV, what the experience, but he can also have a, a video, motiv motivation, video motivation in, the, in smart recruiters and assess for the right skills. Okay, that's what we do, and we've been doing this for the last, the last six years, and we've been doing it with, uh, with smart recruiters, actually, um, for different clients. We have like more than 600 clients in Europe, so. Let's talk about this if you have any questions. Thank you, thank you very much. So um, uh, we are we're almost done. I will just wrap it up um, briefly. So think about the, exp the, the employer branding as awareness versus experience, right? Mm -hmm. um, think about the fact that the medium we use, like think about Da Vinci, right? He's the one who actually started. <laughs> um, uh, think about most of the criteria we use actually to define top talent are soft skills, and that we use no media. To, to actually evaluate that. Um, and um, uh, looking at that and the unemployment rates in your local market, ask yourself the question, can you afford to actually drop people who have potentially um, good skills and could, could be great player in your company? And I'll, I'll leave you with um, one main question that we will not have the time here to answer, but um, if you visualize your company and your organization, the challenge you might face, how would you use such a technology in your company and uh, will that benefit? And uh, if yes, at what extent, right? Um, so that's pretty much it, guys. And um, thank you very much for your attention. Um, I'm conscious we didn't have a lot of time for questions. Uh, maybe just maybe one? We have five minutes. Five minutes. Oh, we have five minutes? Okay, cool. So is cool. there any questions? So any questions? Is somebody here using video interview in this process right now already? So no one, no, no, none of you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's kind of mixed for me the results. So it kind of depends on um, uh, we did it for the traineeships. I worked for, for a larger company and okay. we did the traineeships, so we had a lot of applicants. Mm -hmm. And it basically, what I think is because now I work with a, lot, with a really small company with not so uh, uh, much high volume. Okay. So in that sense, video isn't doesn't make sense for me right now. Maybe. If Mm -hmm. But I have the idea, but maybe you think about it differently, is that it basically helps you out. But have you ever tried to, uh, because I guess uh, most of the company use the video, uh, well, they get a lot of CVs, mm -hmm. so they have high volume recruitment, and then they invite candidate to make a video, so it's a second step of the process. But what, what about uh, this case? Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried to uh, make uh, the candidate apply in video? And first step. No, and I deliberately do not do that right now. Okay. Um, because we hire a lot of tech people. Okay. And tech people really hate it. <laughs> yes. Really hate it. I get so it. Tech, tech people is a specific topic, and um, we have customers who have been using that tool in different way mm -hmm. um, to to get to get and benefit around uh, tech people, right? So. Uh, I might not have time to develop that, but we can discuss this afterwards if you want. Um, but yes, you might have sometimes some type of jobs which you might not feel comfortable or believe like it's going to be too challenging to get them to do it. Yeah. Um, but think of using that type of tool as, as well, a medium of attraction. Um, we built it for that purpose, 
to attract. So I'm building portal, which are actually interactive, and trigger the interest from the start. I could spend my own experience with um, a very crap PDF for actually attract my attention just because of the content. Yeah. So when I think it, it did for me with, with a very crap PDF of 20 pages, <laughs> um, uh, I think, what could you do actually with something like that, right? Yeah, I can imagine um, Mm. Uh, involving like your tech team or manager asking the questions, I can imagine that. Um, as for the CVs, I almost never look at CVs. <laughs> that's <laughs> so, uh, interesting. <laughs> okay, that's interesting. <laughs> I don't think that is really relevant because then you're basically, you know, judging a person how well he or she is, uh, good he or she is in writing a CV, and that's not really the yeah. I must admit, we see a lot of people face to face because if they really think they can work with us, so first we explain, I always call them, explain to them in front of home, okay, this is what we're doing, do you think that's something that suits, that suits you? And if they think yes, then uh, they are invited for a cup of coffee. And for me, it's important that they, uh, not in too many sessions, most, mostly in, or in one day or maybe two times that they come back if they're still interested and together with the test. We've been, we've been working with tech companies of, I can say, like BlaBlaCar, which is a common client with smart recruiters, and actually the first client customer who integrated visual talent in, um, in smart recruiters four or five years ago. What type of a workforce do you need to sit down and watch all those uh, videos? Oh, we, we did it on sales and customer because this question needs to solve it. It's obvious. Than, yeah. yeah. They, I mean, but you can say... The for tech people, what you can do is giving them, giving them the, the choice between the videos, CV, or just a formula. It's because they're hard to, to catch, right? So just giving them the choices. Sometimes they do the video because they prefer the video. So it's like a service you can provide to your candidates to yeah, give them the absolutely. choice. So it's not like a monetary process yeah. because you really need them to catch. So it's quite hard to, to, uh, to, um, to, to, well, to, to attract them. So you need to give them the opportunity to communicate with you the way they want. And then the video is like more an employer brand experience that helps some candidates to uh, take contact with you by the video because they prefer this, uh, this way. It's okay. Yeah. Maybe it's better because thanks to the video, if one of the main indicator is like English speaker and uh, able, uh, ability to uh, code in, uh, in uh, Ruby and uh, curiosity for uh, PHP, I say nothing, I say anything, uh, you, can see, you can see that in the video because you can ask him, okay, just tell me in English how you are you like coding in Ruby and uh, what's, your li what's your last uh, latest project, for instance. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we'd we'll be, we'll be glad to talk about this project, not just to give a CV, because and, it fixes. And to uh, come back so on your, uh, yeah. sorry. There can be a way, there can be a way you can use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just to come back on, the, on your point, which was interesting as well, you said, you just mentioned um, that you have a lot of video to watch, yes. But my question would be then, what do you do if you don't use that? You will basically phone screen, right? seconds to read like this and then you already know yes or no mm. and then from that funnel of 20 candidates I'll mm. probably speak to five. So you see the five, yeah. better, the, best, the five best videos. But you will do the same with the video basically, you will not invite all, you will invite the one that you would like to hear about. Mm. So you have the choice to still do your fun screen, right? Yeah. But um, what could be interesting as well to think about is what if you just don't do the fun screen anymore and then ask the question directly in the tool. Then you just have a video of three minutes to watch Instead, Instead of, of 20 minutes call. This is how minute our clients use it, actually. More and then, and I, if you this is where, where, where they gain time. One person rejecting mm. candidates just through bad reading CVs. Yes. So that's if you read 10 seconds... That's a problem. I think that's a, that's a matter. Mm. Could be. Yeah. 
Well, this is what we see uh, I think the different cleaning challenges. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you.